So today we're gonna to try a fun little mental exercise and do something a little bit different. So while you're all cozy in your homes watching this or chilling on your phone or probably should be working, we're gonna pretend that the event happened and our world is now overrun by zombies. Now, surely being martial artists, we would easily have the leg up on anyone who hasn't trained, right? I mean, we'd have the advantage of taking on the roaming and the rotting, or would we? Now, even though this scenario really isn't realistic at all, it was a fun and interesting exercise to think about what would be the best martial art to use against zombies. Okay, I mean, first things first, we're gonna have to acknowledge there's gonna be some suspension of disbelief here because zombies really don't make sense and they can't exist. I mean, truth of the matter is, The Walking Dead just doesn't you know, there's no blood flow, they can't talk, they can't move, they can't see. So we're just gonna put that aside and just kinda pretend for a minute that zombies actually do exist. Now with that being said, let's kind of establish what the rules for this video are gonna be. Because you know, all throughout media, there's different types of zombies. Those that can talk, that can run, that are just crawl, they eat brains, whatever. So for the purpose of this video, we're gonna kind of do the more generic, more common type, the slow meandering zombies. They're rotting, they are just hungry, and if they bite you, you'll get infected. And if they get their blood on you, or if you got open cuts, well, we're gonna assume you get infected too. So, and we're also gonna apply the same general rule as the only way to kill them is to destroy the brain. So with that in set, we're gonna kind of go along with those rules. Now, when doing this exercise, even though it's kind of goofy and fun, just like real self-defense scenarios, you have to take things into consideration. Is it one zombie, or do you have multiple to deal with? Just like in real life, that strategy is going to change dramatically on how many are attacking you. Are you running from one? Are you cornered by one? Are you in hand to hand with one? Are you being swarmed by a mob of them? All very different scenarios. Okay, now let's look at some of the challenges. It might be easy to think, oh, you know, no martial arts, I can punch, kick, I can beat a zombie up, no problem. Most likely, however, a lot of techniques that will work on a person are not gonna work on a zombie primarily because they don't feel pain. So you work with pressure points, forget it. Liver shots, mm-mm. Soft targets, eyes, throat, groin, it's not gonna have any effect because they're past the point that that does not affect them. They've got one thing on their mind and that's your brain and they wanna eat it. And they're gonna keep on coming no matter what they do. And they also, they age and they fall apart. So. That might seem like an advantage, but if you think about it, and anyone who's ever watched the show The Walking Dead, you'll know that the worst shape the zombie is, sometimes the harder it is to defend against. I mean, if they're really, really in bad shape and you try to grab and push away, they might fall apart in your hands. So that's gross to think about, but say we're talking about zombies after all. So it's important to keep in mind that what will work on a normal human being won't work on them because primarily they don't feel pain. So how do you hurt them? You can break all the ribs you want. It's not gonna stop them. So let's just start with good old karate, maybe something like Shotokan, more old school, traditional. Shotokan, strong strikes, solid stances, good speed. So you're gonna deliver some good solid blows. The downside is that power might be wasted because that power is not gonna work so well on them. As I said before, you, you can break a rib, you can hurt, punch them right in the sternum. You're not gonna stop their heart. You're not gonna stop them from coming. At most, you might knock them back a little bit. So. This might not be the best art just by itself against the zombies because it's not really dedicated to the kind of trauma that you need. If you hit them in the head, sure, you can go, basically you have to go for blunt force trauma to the head. And Shotokan definitely has the power, but maybe the techniques aren't formulated for that because I don't think when they formed this art they were thinking zombie apocalypse. Especially if they tackle you, you go to the ground, Shotokan doesn't have much to defend against that. Now, speaking of good power and damage and strikes, it'd be foolish not to even mention Kyokushin. Kyokushin is one of the hardest contact style martial arts out there. Strong, strong body blows, devastating kicks to the head. So that's gonna be a good art to start with, but once again, Kyokushin suffers very similarly from from the same situations that Shotokan does. That power is gonna be wasted. And plus, Kyokushin is a very, very close art. It's all getting up there and do constant body shots. If you're that close, you're within arms and possibly mouth reach. You don't wanna be that close and those body shots aren't gonna work. Now, Kyokushin has some really, really, really powerful kicks. 
However, I advise against that because if you're that close, a lot of the kicks they have in tournaments are high axe kicks that come down. It's easy to get caught in the shoulder. You're taking yourself off balance. The thing lumbers forward at you, you might fall down. So a Kyokushin, it's going to do damage. You actually have a good likelihood of breaking them apart a little bit. So maybe you could do enough damage where they can't quite chase you. You, you, you do some structural damage, then you might have a chance. But kind of like Shotokan, that power might be a little bit wasted because you're not talking about an opponent who can actually register it as a normal person would. Now, I'd be foolish to leave this one out. American Kempo. This is my art. I've trained in this art. I love this art. It's known for its fast strikes and now we're talking about an opponent that will just stand there for choreographed techniques. So you can do all you want to them. The problem is you might not do a whole lot. I love Kempo. It's designed to destroy joints. It's good vital target areas. It's designed for a street fight. But once again, the zombie's not gonna respond to vital strikes. Yes, Kempo has got some blunt trauma to the head, but it doesn't quite have the power of Kyokushin does. So, and, and Kempo's at its most effective up close way closer than you're gonna to wanna to be, most likely for a zombie, especially if there's multiple. So as much as I wish this would be the best art, I'm not much of a better boat than anyone else is in the apocalypse because I don't think Kempo would be as effective as I would like it to be against a zombie apocalypse. It looks impressive, but it's not that effective against the dead. Okay, so at this point we've kind of established body strikes don't work so well because you have to deliver head trauma. I mean, you've gotta destroy the brain, that's really the focus and your best chance of defending against The Walking Dead. So, okay, what about boxing? I mean, you're talking about a nice, good, solid art, shots to the face, shots to the head. That could work. Two problems I see with that, though. One, you're getting really, really close. And not only that, though, is you're putting your hands in their face. Chances are you're not wearing boxing gloves in this scenario in the apocalypse, so you're probably gonna be boxing bare knuckle. Do you want your knuckles hitting zombie teeth? I wouldn't. And not only that though is, the head trauma is good, it's there, but you're gonna expend a lot of effort to do it. You know, yes, sure, zombies haven't trained, they don't spar, but you start boxing a few of them, you might get winded pretty quick. You might have enough endurance to last a while, but you're still expelling a lot of effort to do some damage that might not be quite enough. And again, it's a much closer range that I'm comfortable with. You guys might disagree, but to me, I, wouldn't, I would not approach a zombie with boxing. So, so far, we're not doing so well during this apocalypse, are we? All these arts I've mentioned so far are fantastic arts, but again, we're talking about a creature that doesn't respond the same way as a normal human would. All right, so what about Muay Thai? Okay, I see some potential with this one. It's got the same concerns I have with boxing in terms of you're still gonna get kind of pretty close contact, and I still would not want any bare knuckles hitting the zombie's face, but Muay Thai's got some devastating leg kicks with it and some great footwork like boxing would have as well. So something like a teep might be really good at keeping them at, at bay. So if they're coming up on you, you threw a couple kicks, front kicks, teeps, you can probably push them back a little bit. Muay Thai also has some devastating leg kicks. You've got a riding person coming after you and you drop that dropping shin kick, there's a good chance you're gonna break that leg. Well, okay, good, the zombie can't chase you anymore. Not bad, so Muay Thai I would say has a pretty fair chance. I don't know if I would rely on it 100% on its own, but it could do some damage, at least enough, hit him a few times, get him off of you so that you can escape. Now, since we're talking about powerful kicks, I, I couldn't possibly leave out Taekwondo or the Korean arts. They are known for their kicks, their powerful displays, acrobatics, their speed. This might actually be an asset during the zombie apocalypse. Now, Taekwondo is also known for a lot of competition, but what art do you know that focuses on head kicks any more than Taekwondo? So the speed's gonna be an asset, the power's gonna be an asset, and you probably will deliver some good head trauma, and also possibly with multiple attackers. So if you've got a couple zombies around you, switching up kicks, back, forth, round kicks, spinning kicks, might actually be an asset. The downfall is you're going to expend your energy quickly. I mean, the people I know who train in Taekwondo, they train hard and they get a workout, but by the end of a sparring session, they're exhausted because there's a lot of energy expelled because of that power and speed and accuracy. So yes, this could be an effective art, but I think you're gonna kind of suffer on the longevity side of it. It'd be good for maybe a couple zombies, but if you've got a swarm, you got a problem. And I also just kind of want to add to any of the kicking arts I've mentioned, the headshots are gonna be risky for kicks, just because 
you're, you're, you're compromising balance potentially and you don't want to get your foot caught on the shoulder or anything. I mean, they're not going to counter grab or do anything like that, but you never know. So it, it's just a kicking that high above the head presents some risks, but if you're good at it and you've got the power, it could be an asset to you. Okay, I'm sure a lot of people are waiting for this one. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu slash wrestling. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to say no on this one. Not because I don't like the art. I love Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It is a fantastic art and you're gonna tear up a person using it. But let's take a close look at this with a zombie. Do you want to roll on the ground with a rotting corpse? I don't because you've got some serious considerations here. We talked about the dangers of close contact. You're not gonna get any closer contact in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and ground fighting. You're not gonna be able to submit them. The Kimura is not gonna work. The scarf is not gonna work. You're not gonna be able to choke them out. You wanna do side control? You wanna wrap your body around their snapping jaws? I don't. So I don't think it's really good for that part of it. And I don't wanna be on the ground if there's multiple because you're not gonna be getting back up. They start piling on you, you're done. Now, where it will work, and I think is an asset, is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu has some great reversals. Again, if you watch any zombie movie or TV show, there's always one character who falls to the ground and the zombie drops on top of them and they're holding them up and the jaws are snapping and they're freaking out. That's where Brazilian Jiu Jitsu will shine. You get someone on top of you, you flip them over, you get a reversal, that's gonna be awesome. You're gonna have some great escapes for that. But don't stay there and grapple with them. Don't grapple with them. Get out, get up, get out, okay? Kung Fu. Okay, this one has some considerations too. I think it shares a lot of similarities to karate in that it's great power and great motion and fluid and powerful, but just like karate, a lot of the damage is not gonna be felt. Again, they don't feel pain. Now what may be effective is maybe like some of the wushu competitions, arts that have big sweeping motions with weapons that actually very acrobatic and it can clear the area. I wouldn't necessarily say stand and fight, but that might be good to get out of a scenario, especially in a swarm. So you might have some potential here to escape. Speaking of Kung Fu, we gotta look at Wing Chun. Wing Chun is very, very powerful, very, very quick. It's got great techniques. It's got great balance and you're gonna stay on your feet. However, once again, close range. And also Wing Chun is very well known for its fast chain punching, but where do those chain punches go? Do you want your hands hitting their mouth and their head? I don't think that's a good idea. You're gonna do a good job driving them back. And especially if it's one-on-one, -on -one, that zombie's toast. You're gonna to knock them down, you're good. But how does it work against multiple zombies? Again, since Wing Chun is a close range art, it's great for self-defense, it's great for a human being, but you punch a corpse, <laughs> You can chain punch them all you want. You're just gonna get some bloody knuckles and an infection for your hard work. So Wing Chun is awesome, but may not be ideal for the zombie apocalypse. Don't feel bad all you guys out there. I diss my art too. What about drunken style? Hmm. This was a little bit of a different approach. A couple of things. One, well, first of all, it depends. If you've been fighting a lot of them already, do you have their, their gunk all over you? Are you dirty? If you study drunken style and you're out there wandering like this, they might mistake you for one of them, so you might even just blend in. Also, you're gonna be fast, you're gonna be loose, you're gonna be able to move around, and let's be honest, if it's the zombie apocalypse, do you wanna be sober anyway? You might be happier in this style. You might not defend yourself, but you'll probably be happier. Okay, what about stand-up jiu-jitsu or judo? Hmm, another possibility here. What are they really good for? Takedowns, throws, locks, grappling, okay. But that being said again, just like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you don't want to grapple with a zombie. For the same reasons as before, too close a to contact. You're not going to hold them. You're not going to submit them. However, what might be effective here, especially the Judo and Jiu Jitsu, I mean, how many times have you seen in movies, characters are fighting off a zombie and a straggler comes up behind them. Maybe they grab and right before that bite comes in, you might be able to respond and catch a shoulder throw. You might be able to throw them off you, get them away from you. Especially with Jiu Jitsu where it's designed to throw opponents into each other, it might be good for pulling them off you. I wouldn't keep that as a primary art for zombies because again of the close proximity and again you can put them in whatever lock you want, it's not going to stop them, they're going to keep snapping the jaw until their buddies come and swarm you. But it's good for a pinch if they grab you, it gets them off you real fast. Also in Judo, a lot of competitions you sacrifice rolls with the throws and all that, I wouldn't do that here, just stay on your feet. Stay in the ground fighting, just get them off you and move on. This one has potential, maybe. What about kendo? I mean, you are talking about an art that practices with a weapon. Uh, now, if you go back to its more, you know, more traditional roots, 
you might have a chance. I mean, I wouldn't mind having a sword during the apocalypse. It gives you a lot of drama to the head, and it's quick, and as long as you learn the technique, you'll be good. You know, the thing with kendo is, kendo these days focuses a lot on competition and sport. And I don't know about you, I don't think zombies care so much about keeping score. So a sword art with this some sword discipline would be awesome, uh, whether that be kendo or not, but that definitely has some potential right there. But since we're talking about weapon arts, I have to throw this one out there. What about a screma or any form of stick art? Now you're talking about blunt force trauma, big time, speed, especially with sticks. They're not gonna get stuck on the head. I mean, how many times have you watched a movie, a character throws a hammer or a hatchet and it gets stuck and they're pulling? No problem with a screma. You just beat them until they fall apart. And you can also replace them with machetes, you know, the same techniques. And I might be fine with two machetes during a zombie apocalypse, especially with the speed and, and technique involved, you might be able to even take on a bunch of them. So you've got your blunt force, you've got your hacking force, you've got your speed. Honestly, I wouldn't mind the screamer at all. It's got some definite possibilities. Honestly, a lot of weapon arts are gonna give you a leg up at this point. So, okay, I've spent most of this video dissing all these arts, so I'm sorry if I've offended anybody out there, but again, we're talking about zombies and people who aren't gonna feel pain, so a lot of arts aren't gonna be as effective as we would like. But if I had to choose right now, what would my recommendations be? Ideally, I'm thinking some sort of a weapon art, a screma or a sword could be your primary art because you're gonna need that speed and you're gonna need a tool to do some damage. Maybe have some judo mix in and really focus more on just the takedowns, the throws and getting them off of you. A little bit of Taekwondo or Muay Thai, get a couple of kicks in there so that if they do approach you too quickly, get too close, get some kicks to knock them back. And it never hurts to know some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but focus on the reversals and the escapes. Don't worry about the submissions, they're not gonna work here. So the Screma mixed with Judo, mixed with a kicking art and some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is probably a winner in my book. So I hope that all of you found this as fun of an exercise as I did. I know it's not a realistic scenario, but it is a good mental practice to analyze different situations, even fictional ones, and discuss what arts might be beneficial given certain circumstances. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, share, comment below, and honestly, let's not lie to ourselves. The best art to know during the zombie apocalypse is parkour, because you want to get the H-E double hockey sticks out of there. Gotta go. Thank you.